Hello friends, it's Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. There's a super small local art shop near my town that I like to go into because you can spend hours browsing through every single corner completely packed with supplies and discover things that you never even knew existed. For instance, I'd never seen this tiny little kid's palette until I looked in their clearance section. It was the only one of its kind and slightly broken, but pretty gosh darn adorable. Since buying this one, I haven't been able to find the same thing anywhere else, but I'll link something similar down in the doobly-doo with the rest of the supplies. I knew immediately that I wanted to convert it into a tiny palette full of professional paints, but it just wouldn't be fair if I did that without testing its original paints first. Honestly, they're not too bad. They layer well on top of one another, and they're about a medium strength when it comes to the pigmentation of their colors. I almost feel bad for gouging out all those cute little paint dots with the back end of my brush. Almost. It took a bit of effort to get the glue and residual paint cleaned up, but really wasn't that big of a deal. This little guy has space for eight paints, so I picked eight colors from my stash of Sennelier watercolors. Truth be told, I have a whole bunch of Sennelier paints because my little art store actually sells them, and I usually pick up a tube or two every time I go in. But. I don't actually have a proper palette for them. I've only ever used six random colors, so intentionally choosing a color selection was really nice. Here we've got Rose Matter Lake, Scarlet Lacquer, Cadmium Lemon Yellow, Quinacridone Gold, Thalo Blue, Cobalt Deep, Indigo, and Sepia Warm. I love the little random six color kit I've been using up to this point, but having a set that can actually mix a black is going to be such a relief. I use my Sennelier paints most when I'm sketching random people at the diner because the transparency and layering abilities of these paints make for excellent portrait work. That's really my favorite way to use them. I knew I'd want to make a color chart to make it easier to refill once the paint started to run out, so I traced the shape of the palette on a piece of paper, wrote down the color names, made swatches, and laminated it with tape, just like we did in our Holbein palette setup. Except this is one piece of paper instead of many. Also, at some point I realized that the tiny little circle on the side of the palette that looks like it's where a keychain is supposed to connect is actually a little holder for the paintbrush. How cute! One thing that I noticed when I was testing out the original paints is that the lid doesn't quite open up flat, meaning that your mixes tend to follow gravity towards the inside edge rather than staying put. I figured the easiest way to fix this problem, as well as make room for the color chart, was to make a pocket on the underside of the palette that would hold the color chart in place while not in use, and attach the color chart to the lid so that the tension would force the lid to lay flat once the chart was out. All of this was made out of packing tape by folding a piece of tape in half to make the long piece that would attach the chart to the lid, as well as folding a piece in half to make sure there was a pocket for the chart to live in when it wasn't being used. I also used more tape to secure everything to the palette, making sure that my little pocket and strip were attached at multiple points. Honestly, I probably went a little crazy with this step, but I'm kind of a disaster zone, so it's always better for me to just take extra care with securing things in place. I'd really hate for this to just fall apart in my pocket one day. Thankfully, the tension strip and pocket work perfectly. As a bonus, when the lid is open and the color chart isn't exposed, the extra length from the strip works as a finger ring, so I can hold it in my hand easily. I actually haven't used a single one of the colors in this palette before, so there's no way I'd back out of having an excuse to give them a shot once this whole thing was set up. 
I chose to work from a pick of myself as a base, but altered it pretty heavily because I felt like it. Mostly I just liked the angle of the shot and the fact that my black dress was hooded. I cannot tell you how excited I was to be able to mix multiple blacks so easily. This paint doodle was done in the moleskin watercolor book Eve gave me in our subscription box swap. And while I still do not recommend this sketchbook, I really don't want to waste the paper, so it's probably going to get plenty of use. In case you hadn't noticed, I love setting up new paint palettes, especially if they're made out of unexpected items or have some useful element of customization. Do you like to do this too? What are some of your favorite setups? And please, if you like spending time with me on our art adventures, please remember to like and subscribe. I've also got a link in the doobly-doo to my Ko-fi account where all donations will 100% go to funding the supplies for these videos. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and teeny tiny little paintbrushes. Bye!